Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today I've got one of those mega benchmarks for you and this one's comparing the new Radeon RX 6700 XT head to head with the RTX 3070. So the nearest competitor in terms of pricing, at least based on the mythical MSRP. Now for those of you who missed it, I recently reviewed the Radeon RX 6700 XT and found it to be around 4% slower than the RTX 3070 in the 14 game sample and that data was collected using our older Ryzen 9 3950X test system. This time we have 45 games and all the data has been updated using our 5950X test system along with the latest display drivers which did see some nice gains for the RTX 3070 in a number of titles such as Godfall, Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Dirt 5 so many of the AMD sponsored titles. Unfortunately, while performance has improved, availability has not, with both models almost always out of stock. So this video serves as more of a guide for those researching what they might purchase once supply begins to exceed the demand. Also, there's a chance that if you're patient enough, you'll eventually get your hands on a graphics card featuring one of these GPUs. And surely at some point, the situation will improve, and when it does, this video will help answer the question, which one should you buy? So with that, let's go over the test system specs and then jump into the benchmark data. As I mentioned earlier, all testing was conducted using our Ryzen 9 5950X test system, which features 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3200CL14 dual rank dual channel memory. For the display drivers, we're using GeForce Game Ready Driver 465.89 and Adrenaline 2020 Edition 21.3.2. Finally, I should note that AMD Smart Access Memory hasn't been enabled, and this is always the case unless specified otherwise. Now, representing the GeForce GPU is the Gigabyte RTX 3070 Gaming OC, though please note I have clocked this down to the default NVIDIA spec. And then representing the Radeon GPU, we again have the Gigabyte Gaming OC, but once again, it has been clocked at the AMD reference spec. So no overclocking here for either model. Now, I'm not going to go over all 45 graphs here. We'll individually take a look at around a dozen of the games tested, and then we'll jump into some big breakdown graphs to quickly summarize all of the data. Though, please note, all graphs will be made available to Floatplane and Patreon members. Okay, let's get into it. Starting with Apex Legends, we find that at 1080p, the RTX 3070 is up to 22% faster, which is quite a significant margin. Even so, it is worth noting the 6700 XT did average 162 FPS using the high quality settings. So for competitive quality settings, frame rates are going to be more than sufficient with either product. But if you're after maximum performance in Apex Legends, you'll be better off with the 3070. It was also 19% faster at 1440p. And for those of you using the high quality settings, the difference between 113 and 135 FPS can be noticed with a high refresh rate monitor. Interestingly, performance was more competitive in Warzone, and here the RTX 3070 was just 3% faster at 1080p and 8% faster at 1440p. The margin does open up to 12% in favour of the GeForce GPU at 4K, though I do suspect few gamers will be targeting 4K with these GPUs. So in short, at 1080p and 1440p, the performance is so close that it really doesn't matter which one of these GPUs you use when playing Call of Duty Warzone. Fortnite's another battle royale game, but this one has always heavily favoured Nvidia, though AMD has made some inroads here. Still, when compared to the RTX 3070, the 6700 XT was quite a bit slower, trailing by a 14% margin at 1080p, 17% at 1440p, and 20% at 4K. So, assuming you have a relatively modern CPU that isn't being heavily utilised when playing Fortnite, the RTX 3070 is going to deliver considerably better performance than the 6700 XT in this title. Performance in Hitman 2 is very similar using either GPU. The RTX 3070 was once again faster at all three tester resolutions, but we're only looking at up to a 6% performance advantage, so you're really looking at a similar gaming experience using either of these GPUs in this title. Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 is heavily CPU bound at 1080p, and as a result both the 6700 XT and RTX 3070 are seen delivering roughly the same performance. However, this does change at 1440p, the 1% low result is still CPU limited, but the average frame rate is now much higher using the RTX 3070. We're looking at a 23% performance uplift, and that margin is extended slightly at 4K to 26%, though neither GPU is able to deliver playable performance, so it's a meaningless result really. Borderlands 3 is the first game we've actually come across where the 6700 XT is faster than the RTX 3070, 
and by a reasonable margin. At 1080p, the Radeon GPU was 12% faster, then 13% faster at 1440p before dropping back to a 7% lead at 4K. So a solid win here for AMD, and the performance uplift at 1440p will be noticeable for those playing at Borderlands 3. Frame rates are also very competitive in the new Cyberpunk 2077 game. Here the RTX 3070 and 6700 XT delivered virtually identical performance at 1080p and 1440p. Though the GeForce GPU did run away with it at 4K, boosting performance by 17%. Though I should note, as was the case with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, performance at 4K was not playable. Control is a horrible title for AMD, and that's largely due to the fact that it is an NVIDIA-sponsored game that was used to showcase RTX features. AMD really hasn't been able to optimize for this one, and as a result, the RTX 3070 was 28% faster at 1080p, which is obviously a massive margin, 31% faster at 1440p, and 38% faster at 4K, so quite the wipeout for AMD. Like Cyberpunk 2077, we find that performance in Red Dead Redemption 2 is extremely competitive with virtually nothing separating these two GPUs at 1080p and 1440p. As we often see though, the RTX 3070 enjoys a performance advantage at 4K, pulling away by a 9% margin to average 51 FPS. The Outer Worlds uses the Unreal Engine 4 game engine, and as is often the case with games using this highly popular engine, the results swing heavily in NVIDIA's favour. Here the RTX 3070 was 17% faster at 1080p, 29% faster at 1440p, and 28% faster at 4K. So like Control, this is another bad title for AMD. Although performance for the RTX 3070 has improved in Assassin's Creed Valhalla since I last tested, the 6700 XT still enjoys a strong performance advantage here. We're looking at an 18% win for AMD at 1080p, and 10% at 1440p, though at 4K the 3070 does once again get the upper hand, though you really could call a 2FPS win a tie. Moving on to F1 2020, and here we find fairly competitive performance across the three tester resolutions. The RTX 3070 was just 4% faster at 1080p, 8% faster at 1440p, and 9% faster at 4K. That said, we are looking at 15 to 20% greater 1% low performance with the GeForce GPU. Forza Horizon 4 has made it back into our benchmark suite thanks to its migration from the crappy Windows Store to Steam. And for a long time, this game has heavily favoured AMD GPUs, but Nvidia did eventually address the issue, and now we're looking at a situation where the RTX 3070 is a good bit faster than the 6700 XT, winning by a 15% margin at 1080p, 14% at 1440p, and 15% at 4K. So pretty consistent scaling there. We're looking at basically identical frame rates in Doom Eternal, and this time it was the Radeon GPU that pulled ahead at 4K, albeit by just a 5% margin. Based on what we typically see at 4K, you'd expect the RTX 3070 to pull ahead, but I believe the 6700 XT has a slight performance advantage here due to the larger VRAM buffer. Doom Eternal does use up to 9GB of VRAM at 4K, so the spillover into system memory does result in a slight performance hit for the RTX 3070. Then at 1080p and 1440p, the frame rates were excessively high, so the margins there probably wouldn't matter anyway, but as luck would have it, both delivered the exact same experience. Speaking of VRAM, I wanted to include these Ghost Recon Breakpoint results using the Ultra Quality preset, so not the Maximum Quality preset, which is called Ultimate. Now, these results might look a bit off at first glance, because at 1080p, they're neck and neck. Then at 1440p, the GeForce GPU pulls ahead, but then at 4K, it's decimated, and the 6700 XT delivers more than twice the performance. This is a great example of what happens when you run out of VRAM. The 8GB buffer on the RTX 3070 is overwhelmed as the game calls for 9.5GB of memory, and as a result, game assets start flowing through the PCI Express bus into system memory at a rate significantly less than that of accessing the local VRAM. Now, this is an important result to show in my opinion, because although I don't feel either product is an ideal 4K gaming solution, the 6700 XT was able to deliver highly playable performance while the RTX 3070 wasn't. Of course, the simple fix here would be to lower the demand on VRAM by reducing textures, for example, and the game would probably only require a few minor tweaks to solve the problem, but you will be reducing visuals to get the game running at a satisfactory level, and I do wonder just how long it'll be before this is standard operating procedure for those with 8GB graphics cards. 
Last up, we have Kingdom Come Deliverance. And I wanted to discuss these results because previously I found when testing the RX 6800 series that AMD's new Navi 20 based GPUs were suffering from performance related issues in any game using the CryEngine. So games like Kingdom Come Deliverance. The RX 6800, for example, was capped at 71 FPS at 1080p and 65 FPS at 1440p. Thankfully though, it appears AMD has found whatever the issue was and addressed it, because the 6700 XT is now able to render 109 FPS on average at 1080p and 84 FPS at 1440p. Of course, it's still slower than the RTX 3070, but performance is more where you'd expect it to be. So it is great that AMD addressed this, but it would have been nice if they told me, given that we brought it to their attention. So that's how the 6700 XT and RTX 3070 match up in 16 of the 45 games that I've tested. And rather than spend an enormous amount of your time going over the other 29 odd graphs, here's a quick summary of the results at the 1080p and 1440p resolutions. Okay, so at 1080p across the 45 games tested, we see that the 6700 XT was on average 4% slower than the RTX 3070, which is exactly what I found in my day one review using a select 14 game sample. Of the 45 games, there were just a dozen where the 6700 XT was slower by a 10% margin or greater, and the only real outlier here were Control and Apex Legends. Having said that, for those of you wondering, if we go ahead and remove Control and Apex Legends from the results, the 6700 XT is still 4% slower on average. Though that's not really an issue anyway, as I typically deem anything within a 5% margin to be a tie. So basically they're so close here, it doesn't really matter. That said, if you're an avid Fortnite player like myself, or maybe you play Apex Legends, then you might want to go with the RTX 3070. But if you're into Battlefield 5, for example, the 6700 XT might be a better choice. Now, at 1440p, the gap does widen. It's far from significant overall, but here the 6700 XT was 8% slower on average, and now it's slower by a 10% or greater margin in 17 of the games tested. Basically, for 1440p gaming, the RTX 3070 is not only the faster product, but also the better value product. So not an ideal situation for AMD, or at least it wouldn't be if supply was able to meet demand. Well, there you have it. For those of you wanting to see how the Radeon RX 6700 XT and GeForce RTX 3070 compare in a massive range of games, now you have your answer. When compared to our day one review, this doesn't really change too much. The 6700 XT fared a little worse at 1440p, but ultimately, yeah, it doesn't change the conclusion. The 6700 XT, it's a good graphics card. It's very capable and it should hold up well into the future, largely thanks to that 12 gigabyte VRAM buffer. We've already started seeing examples where eight gigabytes of VRAM simply isn't enough, though admittedly they are few and far between. Point is right now you can easily get away with an eight gigabyte frame buffer, but whether or not that'll be true in a year or two remains to be seen. But I'm a little bit doubtful, at least for those of you seeking maximum in-game visuals. The problem with the 6700 XT isn't performance related. Rather, the issue is quite simply the price. Of course, we all know why AMD is not being aggressive with their pricing. It simply doesn't make sense for them to do so in the current market. As right now, you'd likely buy well, either of these GPUs, if you could find one of them at a reasonable price. So that somewhat simplifies the process and explains why AMD has gone about pricing the way they have. Still, if you had the luxury of buying whichever one of these GPUs you wanted at or near the MSRP, which one should you get? Well, personally, I'd go with the RTX 3070 for $20 US more because I mostly play Fortnite with my daughter and the fact that the GeForce GPU is already faster before you even enable DLSS makes it the obvious choice for me. I also only play multiplayer games and I typically opt for competitive quality type settings, so memory capacity really isn't an issue. I also like the higher recording quality you get with NVENC. It is only a small improvement when recording, but it is better and if you stream, apparently it is a lot better. The more mature ray tracing support is of quite literally zero interest to me, but it is an added feature of the RTX 3070 if you care to use it. DLSS support is still rather limited, but again, if you can take advantage of it, so the game you're playing supports it, the performance benefits can be quite substantial. So if I could have my pick of either at the MSRP, I would go with the GeForce RTX 3070. And really for the 6700 XT to be even considered, it would really need to be priced no higher than $420 US and would probably end up being my preferred option should it be made available at $400 US, so the same price as the 5700 XT. 
Now, while I would prefer the RTX 3070 over the 6700 XT, the RX 6800 becomes an interesting proposition at $580 US, so 16% more than the 3070. That extra $80 gets you twice the VRAM capacity, and for those that like to hold onto their graphics cards for more than two years, I feel the extra VRAM will come into play, again assuming that you play the latest and greatest titles with the visual quality settings maxed out. It's also 11% faster at 1440p according to our own testing, and even without DLSS you're looking at well over 144 FPS in games like Fortnite. Again, if the RX 6800 was priced a bit more competitively, it would be the obvious choice. And while I do prefer it to the RTX 3070, assuming you're willing to spend the extra $80 US, it's not the obvious choice for me, and I could really make a solid argument for going either way. So, while the 6700 XT offers more VRAM and is meant to be $20 US less, I just don't find it compelling enough given the inferior encoding support, weaker overall performance, and the current lack of a DLSS competitor. And that's really all I have to say on this one. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like. Uh, this was a tremendous amount of work. And if you'd like to directly support this work and get some pretty cool perks in return, then check us out over at Floatplane or Patreon. You'll get access to our Discord chat, our monthly live streams, Tim and myself, Q&As, behind the scenes videos, a lot of cool stuff there. So yeah, if you're interested, links for that are in the video description. But if not, perfectly fine. And I would like to just thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.